What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to add and adjust materials in your model. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the free version of SketchUp and how you can apply materials. Um, and so this is specifically built for people that are using the free version versus like the Go version, which has a couple additional features. Um, so the way that applying materials inside of SketchUp works is you've got an option over here for the paint bucket tool. You can activate the paint bucket tool by tapping the B key on your keyboard. Notice how if you do that, it's going to pop up the materials section of your tray over here. Alternatively, I pretty much never activate this tool. I just go to materials over here and I just pick the materials that I'm going to use and I just click on them inside of my model. And so the first thing is the materials that are available inside of SketchUp currently. So to access the library of materials available inside of SketchUp, you actually want to click on this option right here. This first option is showing you the materials that are already contained inside of your model somewhere. So all of these are applied to things in my model currently. Like this one, for example, is the blue material of uh, the t-shirt of the default model of the free version. Um, but to find the libraries of materials, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this option right here for browse. And so when you click on the option for browse, you're going to get access to all of these different materials that are built into SketchUp. And let's say that we wanted to apply a siding to the top portion of our model, right? I've split this out and I want to apply siding. So what I want to do is I want to go into brick cladding and siding and I want to find one of the siding materials. In this case, we'll go with the cladding siding white right here. And notice how as I click in my model like this, that it's applying the material to whatever face I click on like this. So I can use this in order to quickly apply siding to this model right here. Now, Notice that you can, if you hold or um, if you single click and then do a shift click on multiple different faces like this. So I'm just going to do a shift click like this. And you can apply a material to all of those faces by selecting them, then selecting a material and then clicking. And it's going to apply the material to all of those. So you can use this to quickly apply a material to multiple different faces inside of your model. Now. One thing I want you to be aware of, and my roof is a good example of this because I've put it in a group, and we talked a little bit about grouping in the last video. If you didn't watch that, I highly recommend that you watch it. Um, you can apply materials to the outside of groups in addition to applying it to raw faces. So notice how these are just raw faces inside of SketchUp, meaning none of the geometry is actually grouped. But for my roof, I've created this as a group so I can go through under roofing, pick the shingles, and I can click right here and it's gonna apply that material to the entire outside of the group. And notice how if you go up into your entity info, you can see when you click on something, you can see if it's either a face or if it's a group by clicking on it. And notice how it shows you the materials that it has applied to those surfaces right here. So you can actually see the material that's applied to any individual face or surface right here. You can also click in here and adjust the material or pick a new material for an object if you want to do that. I'm going to undo that because I really don't do a whole lot of managing my materials inside of the entity info up here. Now, one thing I want you to be aware of when you're dealing with groups is you, it is possible to apply materials to a group and also to individual faces. So let's say, for example, that I have my ground plane right here and I want to apply a sidewalk material to the paving on the inside. Well, right now, if I was to go into my landscape section, for example, right here, landscape fencing and vegetation, and pick grass and click on this, well, that's going to apply the material to everything in the group, which isn't necessarily what I want. And so I have two options here. So the first is you can double click into the group and apply the materials directly to faces, which is usually what I do. Right, I'll come in here and I'll apply this to the faces themselves, but I also want to use this to demonstrate something else. So if I double click in here and I apply this concrete aggregate smoke material to the faces, right? So I've double clicked inside of this group. You can see that I'm editing the inside of the group because I have a bounding box around the outside. And then I apply this 
to the actual surfaces in here, I'm able to apply this to the individual surfaces. The other thing I want you to notice though, is let's say that I didn't do that, and I first off applied the grass material to the outside of this whole group. So this group has the grass material assigned to it. But if I double click in here, and I was to apply the concrete material, to these two faces. Notice how if I click on the outside, the whole group still has grass applied to it. And so materials that are applied directly to faces always take precedent over materials that are applied to groups. So if you have a group like this, you could apply a material to the whole outside of the group, and then you could double click in here and apply materials to the inside of the group like this. This is really valuable because being able to group this geometry so that it doesn't merge with my house model is actually extremely helpful. And so what that does is it gives me the ability to group geometry so that it doesn't merge inside of my model, but I can still apply materials to the individual faces. But now let's talk a little bit about how we can change the size of materials. Now, if you have the Go version of SketchUp, when you select a material, there's actually a little option in here that you can click on in order to edit a material. And it gives you access to things like being able to adjust the tint and the size by typing in values and things like that. That's only available in the Go version. But there is a way to adjust materials inside of the free version without paying for the Go version. And so what you can do is you need to click in here and you need to select a singular face, right? So in this case, for example, I have this one face selected. I'm not selecting the outside of the group. You have to actually select the geometry itself that's in here that makes up the face. But if I right click on this, there's an option down below for texture position. So what position texture does is it pulls up this little window right here or this little tool right here that has these different pins on it. And you can actually click and drag the pins in order to adjust materials. And each one of these pins does something a little bit different. So this first one gives you the ability to set a point and then move the material. So let's say, for example, that I wanted to make it so that this brick was on the corner. Well, what I can do is I can single click in order to pick the pin up and I'm going to go pick the corner right here and I'm going to click and drag based on that point right here and notice how this is going to snap to the corner like this. Well, in addition to being able to do that, you can also click and drag this green one, this green pin in order to adjust the size of the material on the face like this. So. I can use this in order to make this bigger or smaller right here. And in this case, what I want is I want to make sure that I set this pin directly along the line from this pin right here because it scales based on the difference between the green pin and the red pin like this. But notice how I'm able to make my bricks bigger right here. And when I'm done, I can hit the enter key. So there are other pens in here that give you the ability to scale up and down or shear your texture. I very rarely use these just because I don't have a whole lot of situations where I need to shear a texture. I might use the blue one in order to stretch a little bit if I need to do that, but I rarely use this yellow one right here. But once I'm done changing this material, I can hit the enter key like this. Well, notice how now this material right here is bigger than these other materials. Well, what I can do is the paint bucket tool actually has another useful function. So if I tap the B key, Notice how there's an option on here for Alt equals sample material. So if I tap Alt, what that's going to do is toggle me to material select. Well, remember, we've made this instance of the material bigger than the others. Well, if I select it, notice how when I apply this to these other places, it's applying that material based on the transformation that I use the position texture tool in order to use. So I can use this in order to make things bigger, and then I can sample them and reapply them to surfaces inside of my model. Now, this can be very useful for things like fencing. So let's say that we were to come in here and we want to go to, there's an option here for landscaping, fencing, and vegetation. Well, notice how there's a couple materials in here that are actually transparent. So we'll go with this black one right here. So if I apply this material to the surface, notice what that's going to do is that's actually going to apply a material that has an opacity associated with it. Um, so this has a dark opacity and this has a clear opacity, meaning I can actually see through the material and apply it 
on the surface. Well, in this case, I want to make sure that I'm getting the whole fence in here. So I'm going to right click on the surface, go to texture position and notice how in this case, I could use that blue in order to click and drag this down right here so that I know that it's sitting on this face. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to click and drag this so that I have a post on the corner right here. And then finally, I want to take this because I want to make sure that this material actually has posts on both ends. So I'm going to single click and grab this green scaling function. And I'm going to click and drag this so that I have a post on both ends right here. So now we've got this fence on here and I think I need to make it a little bit shorter. So we'll click and drag this down a little bit more right here. We'll hit the enter key. So now we're in good shape and I want to sample this. So I'm going to tap B, tap Alt to sample it and then apply it to this face. And then you would just do the same thing over here where you would position it. And we've already set the height up properly. So all we have to do here is just stretch it a little bit to make sure our fence fits along the face properly like this. And I'm not really worried about the fencing on the sides, so I'm just gonna go through and just really quickly apply this right here and it'll be close enough. But now I've got this fence around the outside of my model right here. Now, one thing that you should be aware of is you have a couple options for adding additional materials to your model. So let's say for example that you wanted maybe a different pavement material. Well, you can click in here and notice how there's an option to go into the 3D warehouse. The 3D warehouse is going to have different materials that you can download into your SketchUp model. And so these have already been downloaded right here. These are the materials that are actually like inside of SketchUp like this. Um, and they're already kind of built in, so you don't need to do anything with these. But you can go up and you can search for other things. So let's say we wanted a concrete or let's say pavers. So let's say we wanted pavers right here. And I want to search materials. But notice how there's a number of different materials inside of the 3D warehouse that you can download into SketchUp. So for example, say that I wanted these pavers right here, what I can do is I can click on this option in order to download it. And actually you need to click into it and then click on download, but that's gonna download that and then it's going to have it as the active material right here. So what I can do is I could double click in here and I could use the paint bucket tool. So I'm just gonna tap B and I'll just apply this paver material right here. So you can actually download materials from the 3D warehouse you can find materials in here and you can bring them in. So say we wanted a different siding. We could look for siding and we're going to look for materials right here. And notice how there's a number of different options in here. So say that we wanted to go with... So I don't like the way this is going to look on the house, but just as a demo, we could click on siding and download the siding material right here. And then we could apply that to these faces. So we'll just tap the B key, single click, in order to apply the siding to the house like this. So you can bring in materials that way into SketchUp. The other option we have is one a lot of people don't know about. And so let's say that we were to bring in a material from a free texture website. So Polyhaven is a really good one. So we're gonna go to Polyhaven. We wanna to go to assets. We wanna to go to textures. And in this case, we wanna bring in a new brick texture. So in this situation, let's say we wanted to just bring in this red brick. We can download this. Notice how we want to download a zip file and the only thing we really need in this zip file is going to be the diffuse map because the diffuse map is basically the image file for the texture itself. These other things are things for like 3D rendering that make the material look bumpy, right? So this one is an ambient occlusion map, which highlights the crevices. This one is, it's either a, it's a displacement map. This one's a normal map. These are all maps for rendering and you don't need them. We just want the diffuse map. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring this in and we're gonna lower the resolution. I don't need this to be a super high resolution image. I don't need it to be a big file. So we're just gonna download a 1K diffuse map. This is gonna give us this image. So it's gonna download a zip file, which you can extract, and then you can upload it into SketchUp free. And so when I extract this, 
and I go inside of the folder, there's going to be this diffuse image, right? Well, now what I want to do is I want to go up to the little hamburger menu on the upper left-hand side. We're going to click on import, and we're going to say we want to import something from our device. Well, what you can do is you can drag that file here, or you can just go find it, double-click in, and find that material, and I'm going to upload it. And it's going to ask me what I want to do with it. Well, in this case, I want to import this as a material. So I'm going to click on the option for as material, and it's going to bring that in right here. Well, notice how this is brought in in a way where I can single click on a face, and then I can move my mouse in order to set the size of the brick like this. Well, once I do that, now I've brought that brick material in here. And you can actually find it by going to your in model. And in this case, you've got this brick material right here. So you can see that material and you can apply it to surfaces. So I could go around and apply this to these surfaces right here. Now, you might have been thinking, well, the thing about this is I'm having to go in here and reapply this brick material to the surface every single time. And I agree with that. So what I want to do is I want to take this and I want to, instead of doing it this way, well, in this case, I want to remove this material. So what I would do is I would use the paint bucket tool and I would sample something with the default material on it. And I would just go around and I would remove this like this. Well, then what I would do is I would go around and I would do a shift click. And I actually like to double click. So I'm doing a shift double click in here. So I pick up the edges. And what I want to do is I want to take all of these faces I want to right click and I want to make them a group. Well, now because they're a group, instead of me having to go through and apply a material to every one of these, I want to apply that brick material right here. Well, notice how when we remove that material from all faces, that material got moved into this unused materials section. And so there's a button right here where you can get rid of the unused materials, which makes your file faster. But in this case, I still want to use it. So I'm going to click on it. Well, now all I have to do is apply that brick material to the entire group right here. Now, the only thing I don't like about this is because these walls are single thickness, right? So if I rotate in here, it's kind of hard to see. If I rotate in here and I apply this to a single thickness wall like this, it's applying the material to the inside and outside of the group. So you can kind of see that brick material through the model itself. So that's not necessarily ideal, but if you're not really worried about that, um, then you can just set this up where you can just apply the material to the group like this. So it's kind of up to you on if you want to apply materials to both the inside and the outside of those faces or however you want to do that. All right. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about materials in SketchUp. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I'll link to this full series on this page. So if you missed any videos, you can go back and check them out. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.